Bill, what have you got for us? All right. Well, uh, Jimmy, I've got a little thing here I picked up when I was uh, on tour in Australia. Uh, you know, so I thought you might like this. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a didgeridoo. And I'd like to play you uh, <laughs> the 100 greatest didgeridoo hits. <laughs> <laughs> First one. Who could forget this? <laughs> one for lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when this was a hit? <laughs> <laughs> and what about the up tempo? <laughs> <laughs> and of course the Christmas hit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks very much. Yeah. So, John, Josh, you're hipsters. You're, you're cool, Two, right? young dudes. You're, how will you cope against the experience, the wisdom of Sean and Bill? <laughs> My tactic is to get nine-letter words that uh, these two won't have heard of, like retweeted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, hold on, hold on. I know all about that. I tweet. Do you? I'm Do you? on the Twitter. Or I'm the Twitter arty. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, why? <laughs> I'm only on there because some bloke went on there pretending to be me and he was having a much more interesting life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show them. I'll show them. Oh, it's Tuesday, I'm having a Jaffa cake, walking across the room. <laughs> Sit down and have a Jaffa cake, mate, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> now, now, Sean, you and Bill, uh, you're old friends, do you think that's going to help this evening? Well, yeah, and I also <laughs> think I deserve some kind of prize for being the first contestant on Countdown to have a friend, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Merit some kind of uh, achievement. And, Bill, we are very old friends. We first met, we, we had the losing garden at the Chelsea Flower Show. Yeah. <laughs> in 84, wasn't it? That's right, yes. The one with the corpse in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we go way back, way yeah. back. Yeah, and before that, we were cellmates in a Thai prison. <laughs> Um, Sean, how do you think John and Josh can be defeated tonight? Well, I think there's a very good chance that they'll be thrown off course by uh, Josh's voice breaking. I think that's a good <laughs> chance. Uh, Bill, have you got a mascot? Uh, yes, uh, I have, actually. Um, and this is one of my most uh, treasured possessions. And, I, and I, you know, I didn't really want to bring it at all, because I'd say it might happen to it, but... It's a, it's a log drum. 100% uh, sure it's not a toaster. It looks... I know, it does look like a toaster, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> I, I believe this is the thing that has been made for me to play it on. Hang on a minute. <laughs> this thing, this <laughs> seems really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's not part of it. That's clearly not. That's a giant. I think that's the table we've uh, all got. We've all on. got one of those, Bill. Well, one of these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've got one of those. Yeah, we've got one of those. Everyone here. Yeah, we've all got. Oh, got it. <laughs> You're going to get a girl's one. <laughs> Fucking hell, they gave me a girl's one. <laughs> <laughs> you can now see a little bit more of it there, right? How's that? There you can see that? Oh, OK, yeah, it's got, it's got a pleasing... But to make it more interesting, perhaps I'll put it blindfold. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 Definitely a no. great move. <laughs> no, it's funny if I don't hold it. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> it's like craft work. <laughs> if you've just tuned in, you've gone quite mad. <laughs> yeah. I'll, play, I'll play a bit faster, if it's a bit more impressive, isn't it? So you start with a kind of... some correspondence I had with the AA, uh, the Automobile Association, not the... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, and they, uh, I, I didn't renew my membership uh, because I didn't have a car, so it seemed pointless. <laughs> but, they, uh, but they wrote to me with an increasingly uh, more sort of threatening tone.
Right. And the first, the first letter was very sort of like jokey. So it said, Dear Mr. Bailey, it seems you've chosen not to renew your AA membership. I assume this must be an oversight. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> and then the next one <laughs> was a little bit more. There's a little bit of a threat. It was, Dear Mr. Bailey, I'm very concerned that I've not heard from you about your AA membership, which is about to lapse. Can you contact us ASAP, as you will soon have no cover and be vulnerable, like a hermit crab, soft <laughs> and easy pickings for predators without its protective shell? <laughs> and on the last one, they really went to town. Dear Mr Bailey, I'm shocked that you would be reckless enough to leave the warm embrace of the AA <laughs> and strike out into the unknown, a cold and unforgiving place beyond our reach, where your future is at best uncertain, at worst a living nightmare. <laughs> By leaving the AA, you have placed you and your family in mortal danger. <laughs> you have set the countdown on a ticking time bomb of despair. Picture the scene. A stormy night, <laughs> a late model Renault Kangoo with a malfunctioning distributor cap. <laughs> <laughs> On the verge of the B3116, just where it joins the A39. Terror stalks the verge. <laughs> that stricken vehicle is yours. The terrified driver, you. <laughs> In your panic, you clutch the one lifeline out of this Dantean circle of hell. Your only hope, the AA. But then you remember, you've cancelled the membership. You collapse on the verge, weeping, crying, the bitter tears of regret, shouting, why? Why did I forsake them to die here alone? <laughs> Please let me know if you reconsider. <laughs> if you could sum up the atmosphere on Countdown with a little tune, how would it go? Right, well, luckily, uh, he provided me with this high-tech piece of... Oh, Christ. Uh, <laughs> the CBB's keyboard. Because um, <laughs> I think that, you know, the, the tune... <laughs> It's kind of quite, you know, you're right, it is a bit, it's tension, isn't yes. it? It's a bit tense. Nerve wracking. So, in that last bit, <laughs> that bit is a bit scary. I would change that to a more lilting Irish theme, sort of like. for you, uh, Jimmy, is one of my favourite books. This is, there's, a, there's an instructive element to this show, so uh, I thought I'd bring on something to try and, you know, educate. This is um, a phrase book uh, called Practical Dialogues, uh, where they're not actually practical in any way. It's an Indonesian to English uh, phrase book, and um, they're just, they're not at all uh, helpful. But really, I'll, I'll give an example. These are not the sort of phrases, you know that like phrases, if you go somewhere, you're, you're like, is there a restaurant near here, or uh, could you direct me to a bar? And this is a conversation between two people, and it goes like this. I'm going to see the dentist. Right now! <laughs> by five o'clock. <laughs> and then, what for? <laughs> <laughs> kind of obvious, really. To have a tooth out. <laughs> What's the dentist's name? <laughs> Fadley. <laughs> Fadley. Maybe a typo, I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> Fatly. And then this is where it really goes on. He is also an actor, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> you are lucky. <laughs> Why? You have handsome dentist. <laughs> Not qualified, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just dabbling. These conversations are more sort of like uh, romantic. They're the kind of conversations, you know, you want to try and get to know someone a bit better. This one's called, do you often dream? What is a dream? Something which one seems to see or experience during sleep. Tell me another definition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, heard that one loads of times. Uh, a, a dream also means mental pictures of the future. Give me an example. <laughs> <laughs> Having dreams of wealth and happiness. Do you often dream during sleep? Yes. What did you dream last night? I dreamt I was kissing Sophia Loren. <laughs> <laughs> the theme of the night is instruction, education. I just want to run through the difference between the different keys, you know, because since the 1960s, pop music is now more and more in the minor key. It used to be jolly. It used to be very happy and jolly, but now most pop music is in the minor key. And it's slower than it used to be. We, 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 we favour slow ballads. 
in the minor key, like Adele is the classic example. Her ballad's very slow and in the minor key. I wrote a song for Adele uh, called uh, You Left Me, but I'm not going to go on about it. <laughs> he goes, uh, I met you down on the street and you said that there was someone you were on your way to meet and i knew it couldn't be me because i was the one that was there <laughs> <laughs> uh, i stood for many hours crying outside your door singing why 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 did you leave why did you I'm not going to go on about it. <laughs> the earliest record of Twat is um, someone saying to his wife, give not male names to such things as thine, but I think thou hast two twats, a wife of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I've got two twats, yes I have, yes I have. <laughs> <laughs> that, old, that old country's fair song. <laughs> They'd stand outside pubs saying how many twats they had. <laughs> Twat braggers, they were known as. I've got more twats than you. I've got more twats than you. Twats than you. Twats than you. I've got more twats than you. Oh! So I'm really nervous. I'm a bit of a Bill Bailey stalker tonight. So I just want to get it out there early, but I've seen him like five or six times live, and I'm just a bit nervous tonight. Okay. Um... <laughs> Just, just got a few, I've just got a few mass problems I need to uh, <laughs> pull through. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a bit of a crush on Bill? Well, not quite. I've, I've just more love, you know. There was a headline once that um, I'm Signal... I'm Signal? <laughs> oh, my God, you've got it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> what is your secret, Bill? What's going on? It's well, two twats. <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, got grade six clarinet. I mean, uh... <laughs> I think if Rachel was found peering into your kitchen window, you would still be the one that got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, time to go across to dictionary corner. Bill, what have you got for us this time? Well, uh, Jimmy, I've been recently uh, travelling in uh, Indonesia. All right. And um, you know, I like to try and pick up a little bit of the language. So uh, I bought this book. Uh, it's called Practical Dialogues. And it's supposed to be helpful little conversation starters. But the trouble is they're not actually that practical in terms of conversation starters because they do require the other person to join in a very specific way. I'll give an example. <laughs> These are all genuine. Uh, let me show you this one. I quite like this one. Uh, which way up is the, the pen going? Here we go. Tell me about plasma. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other person has to say, plasma is clear yellowish fluid in which the blood cells are carried. <laughs> and you say... Oh, uh, what is blood? <laughs> and then they tell you, they say, it is a red liquid flowing throughout the body. And then they say, what happens if a man's heart stops beating? He dies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> what does fire do? It burns. <laughs> what catches fire easily? Paper, hair, cotton. <laughs> Showed your house against fire? Yes, I have. <laughs> what is a fire alarm? An apparatus for making no the outbreak of fire. Is fire destructive? When fire is angry, it can destroy. <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> right. One more. Um, OK, this is my favourite. This, um, this is one about smuggling. This is great. Well, check this out. Mm, hang on. Is smuggling forbidden? See, this, I think this conversation is about someone who's thinking about smuggling <laughs> and is just chatting to someone on a bus to hope that they know. <laughs> is smuggling forbidden? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Why? It gets good secretly and illegally. What do you call a person who smuggles? A smuggler's. <laughs> <laughs> there are many smugglers in the world, aren't there? Yes, there are. <laughs> what would happen if I smuggle opium into Malaysia? You would be hanged. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.